this is DJ Rock and Rob, and I got something really fantastic to show you. Are you an interactive DJ? Do you like to get out there with your people and mix it up? Well, I am. And I usually feel pretty constrained when, uh, when I'm doing the crew dances and stuff because I have to keep running back to my console in order to get the next song going to whatever so that I have physical control over it because I mean a lot of keeping somebody's attention is keeping that mood happening, right? Well, I've, I got the best thing I've found yet. Take a look at this. That's right, we got play, stop, individual volume, crossfader. And if I took the time to program it, we'd have uh, high knob, low knob, balance, whatever you needed. There's also other functions like equalizer settings. Now I don't have this set up yet, but this would be in the effects, effects range which is really nice, but again, I don't have it set up yet. I just wanted the basic function of being able to play and pause. How cool is that? So I know you're wondering, how the heck do you do that? Well, I gotta tell you, it's super, super easy, okay? All you have to do is go to the Android market and download OSC, Touch OSC, okay? Touch OSC. Now, for the computer, you need to download MIDI Yoke and PD Extended. I'm gonna have links for you, but with these two things, the MIDI yoke is what actually communicates the computer with the phone, right? The PD exp expended, Extended is the map, right? This is the map. This is called Mix 2. There were a lot of different skins, like, uh, like for instance, uh, here's the simple, right? This is what the simple looks like. It's just a bunch of faders. And then uh, beat machine, or hold the effects. I, I mean, you know, whatever you want to set it up to. But I use the Mix 2. That's what I like. Here it is. Now, take a look. This is the map of, oh yeah, we closed the program. So, what you have to do is, in the media, come down to the MIDI settings, and 
input device. You click on the input device, in from MIDI yoke 2. Then the output device is MIDI yoke 1. So in from 2, out to 1, apply it, hit OK, and now we are communicating with the computer. Let's go to the equalizer. And I don't think you can really see these dots, but they are moving. The, equalize the green is really what's easy to see because it has that black bar to help you. But we have control. Now, <clears throat> in Virtual DJ, or whatever software you're using, this is absolutely compatible with Traktor, uh, Serato, all that stuff. All you have to do is go to the remote control function or the MIDI mapper and build your own MIDI map. That was the hard part for me, was uh, learning, learning the... I started I started with this on Virtual DJ 7, and Virtual DJ 7, the MIDI mapper is not quite as intuitive as this uh, Virtual DJ. This is 4.3. It's old. <laughs> but what I found is that the MIDI mapper is incredibly intuitive. For instance, we're going to add a button, right? Up here, it's already set to auto learn. So all you have to do is touch the button that you want to do, and um, it automatically puts in what the control is. Right now it says control five. So apparently on this, it's the fifth knob that they created, right? Now on the left here, what do you want that to function? Well, I wanna set it as a, as a gain. So where would that be? Would that be in mixer? Yes, it is. There's the gain. Now I want it to go to deck one. If you notice during the demo, the uh, the Usher song, DJ God Has Fallen In Love, was significantly quieter than the Point of Sisters, I'm So Excited. Well, now I have a gain control. So, let's play the Pointer Sisters. Pretty loud, right? Now we'll play uh, Usher. We can't hear anything because the gain is all the way down. Let's turn the gain up. Now, we have too much gain, and we're over-modulating. That's just crazy. Yeah. There. Eh, a little bit more. Anyway, I don't know if you can actually see that moving. It's just that simple. Okay, so you need to download on your phone uh, Touch OSC. Then on the computer, you need to download MIDI Yoke and PD Extended, right? But there's one more crucial part that you need. In order for the phone to communicate with the computer, you have to physically be on the same local area network, or LAN. Transfer complete. What that means is, you don't have to have internet access, you have to have network access. And don't, don't think that your, your gig is gonna have the internet or whatnot, but um, what I did was, I got a, a wireless router and installed it in my console and have my computer hooked up to it. Now this wireless router does not have internet access. So with the computer, I can't, I can't go surf the web. Um, but the router built its own little network. I got my phone, turned on the wireless and uh, connected to the router and then I didn't tell you about this. In the Touch OSC, the host, let's see where it is, in the information panel, the network. Here, take a look at this. 
in the network, the host, uh, you can't see it, can you? Darn it. I typed in the, uh, the IP address of the computer that we're trying to communicate with. Uh, port outgoing is already set to 8,000. Port incoming is already set to 9,000. And then right below there is your local IP address for the phone. Now that's not really important, but um, it's good information to have. You know, like uh, for instance, if, if you didn't happen to have uh, control with, uh, if these sliders were not working, one of the troubleshooting techniques would be to ping your local IP address. You, uh, I don't know if that's a, an advanced uh, computer trick for you or not, but if you uh, know anything about networking, then you know what ping is. Anyway, all you have to do is input the IP address of the actual machine that you're using. Now for Windows XP, it's real easy to get to. Down in uh, the taskbar, hopefully you have the internet icon there. You go to status, and then next to the general tab is support. Support shows you all of your IP information. The IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. Now, again, if you already know how to get how to ping a computer you already know where to find this information but for those of you who don't there it is for you okay so the IP address on this particular network is 192.168.1.100 so I just type that here in the phone and we're good to go so now what I don't like about this interface is there's no save or, or go back, you have to hit the back button, and that was always kind of nervous for me because I thought I would lose my progress, but I don't. Uh, right under the network button, you can see what you've set it to. The layout, it shows you what it's set to, and you just click Done. So now, we move this out of the way, and we still have control. There are two very important things I need to tell you. Number one, this is not intended to replace your physical position behind a console. This is not intended for you to DJ with way out there. This is only for you to be able to push play. That's it. It's, it's, it's really fun that you can control all these other things, but and to honestly get the right uh, performance. You need to be physically behind the console. I just want to be out there and be able to push play. The other thing I need to tell you about is it absolutely drains the ever-loving life out of your phone. That's right. With the wireless on and uh, the program has set the uh, screen to not go off. It's full brightness, full time, so it drains the life out of your phone. Now, I'm not going to say it's going to die in five minutes, but you certainly cannot run a gig from your phone. You won't last that long. Um, I was playing with it, and I got probably, I don't know, an hour. I think maybe an hour and a half. But uh, I was down to like 15%. And I don't have that many running processes on my phone, so I know that that was eating up the entire amount of my battery. And even now, while I was making this, this video, I'm already down to 75%. And I've only been, I haven't been shooting this for very long. I haven't been playing with this for very long. And I'm down to 75%. So, again, this is not meant to replace your physical time behind the console. That's the only place that you can actually do your job. This is just a tool, a momentary tool. So, you organize what you want to do. You go out there. Maybe you're talking on the mic, and then you just hit the button. But when you're done talking on the mic, and you're done hitting the button, you get your butt back behind that console. <laughs> Anyway, use it as you will, but just remember, uh, it'll kill your battery. Good luck. Talk to you guys later. What comes around?